Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Oakland Presbyterian Church. My name is Craig, and I'm the pastor here. And I want you to know today is kind of special because we paid big money, we spared no no expense, and we brought in the best children's choir in the whole country. They are here today. And let me tell you, they don't come cheap. So when the offering is a little bit later, you know, help us out here. No, they are awesome. Actually, this is our children's choir under the direction of Miss Bonnie Literal, and we are so glad that you are here, and apparently you've drawn a little bit of a crowd, so we're glad especially for that. So welcome to all of you. Hey, if you have your phone, your smartphone with you, I want you to know that uh, I'm the kind of pastor that wants you to bring those suckers right into church and put them to good use. We're going to sanctify those phones, and you can start right now by pointing it at the QR code that is in front of you, and that'll take you to an app that we have that will uh, help you. You will be able to download the uh, bulletins. You can use that instead of a paper bulletin. You can also share with us a prayer request. We would love to hear from all of you if there's something going on in your life that you would like to have some people praying with you for that. Let us be those people even for just this week. Um, Also, you can give if you'd like to share a donation, your offering or your tithe with the church today. You can do that through a secure online portal, and so it's um, touchless and easy and safe. If you would like to share an offering here today, then we have two places that you can do that. One is out in the vestibule, and the other one is a box just right over here. So thank you for your support. And you can either use that uh, app to tell us about yourself, fill out a Connect card online, or you can use one that's right in front of you. So somewhere in the pew, we have brought back those cards. Please take one now or do it through the app. Let us know a little bit about yourself. Give us an email so we can tell you a little bit more about uh, Oak Compress and all the great stuff that's happening here, including on Wednesday nights our amazing youth and children program, and you're going to get to enjoy uh, what happens on Wednesday nights here today. So let's continue to worship God. Follow that up. Let's join together in a call to worship. It's in your bulletin. It'll also be up on the screen. Uh, Let's ask for God to join us with his presence. Come, take refuge in the Lord, for God is good. Come, rejoice in the Lord, for God will provide peace for you. Come, open your hearts to the Lord, and you will be given blessing. Thank you, God. 
Let's stand up and let's sing together. together that's really based on our belief here that there are no perfect Christians. They just don't exist. We all struggle. We all mess up. We all fall short. That is part of the human condition. But what the Christian condition offers is forgiveness and restoration and grace and mercy. So let's claim that. Let's access that now through a prayer first that we'll pray together because this is true for all of us. We believe but then also a time that you can have yourself to unburden your soul with the Lord. So let's pray. Gracious God, who pours out freely the gift of the Holy Spirit, we confess before you that we have failed to recognize this most valuable gift. We have been satisfied with ordinary things, suspicious of unfamiliar things, and blind to spiritual things. We cleanse us and forgive us, O Lord, Burn away our presumption and self-sufficiency. Open us in faith to receive the renewing touch of your hand. Through Christ we pray. My friends, here is the good news. Here is the heart of of what we believe in this place. We believe that because of Jesus Christ, because of his sacrifice on the cross and how that shows us God's abundant and amazing grace and love, we are forgiven, we are set free so that we can live, every one of us, no matter what, in newness of life. Know that you're forgiven and be at peace. Amen.
love need to share it with others. So do that now. The way we do it, it's a very ancient practice. It goes back to the early beginnings of the church where we say the peace of Christ be with you and the answer is and also with you. Do that now with the people around you. Sing loud. I couldn't hear you last time. Sing louder. While they're sort of going to their next spots, then I don't know if you would be interested in praying with me as we prepare to listen to God. Gracious God, we have uh, sung, we have prayed, we have done a lot of talking so far, but now it's time for you to speak into our lives. Take the words of Scripture and let them become real for us and relevant for us. Open our ears so that we hear them with fresh ears. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
hut cheer up. Joel 2, 28 through 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape. As the Lord has said, and among their survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, he did good. You can clap for him if you want. I mean, that was... Good job. You worked hard on that. And thank you guys. I know you worked hard and rehearsed really hard on this every Wednesday night. So thank you for that. And uh, just to those who are here because you have a child in this choir and you haven't met me yet before, my name is Craig. I am the new pastor here. And just fair warning, uh, the rep I have is that I'm a little bit more long-winded than the pastors who have been here previously. So settle in. This is going to be about two hours, but it'll go fast. I promise it'll be really interesting. Not quite that long, but it is a little longer. Um, and so what we've been doing here is we have been talking about the times that we are in, a time when it seems like the only thing that hasn't changed is the fact that change is coming at us each and every day. It has been a season this last 19 months where uh, it just seems like it's one thing after another. Now they're telling us that it may be a while before we can get our Christmas presents even. We need to start getting our Christmas presents now because it's going to take so long for them to be delivered. So one thing after another after another. It has been exhausting. It has been stressful. It's been depressing. And, you know, I think a big question is, does God have anything at all to say about all this stuff that's been going on? We've been in school. We've been out in school. We've been in school. We're wearing masks. We're socially distancing Everything has just been going so crazy. What does God have to say about this? Well, it turns out that a little book in the Old Testament gives us some very, very specific information about what we should be doing during times like this. And even though it's getting towards the end, we hope not too late to learn about how God is really guiding us through times like this. So, we learn in the book of Joel that they were going through something, it wasn't the same, but it was a very similar thing where it affected everybody. Everybody's lives changed. For them, it was a drought, which means that it stopped raining, which means that it's tough for the plants to grow. And that drought also became, also was accompanied by this huge swarm of locusts. And locusts, what they do is they settle on crops and in orchards and they eat everything that grows. This is a problem because what happens over time, this huge swarm of locusts that they hadn't seen ever this many before, it ate everything. Which means that there was no crops, there were no fruit, there was no vegetables, that affected the animals that they were counting on to give them things to eat right? Meat and milk and all that stuff. The animals couldn't, didn't have anything to eat themselves, so they began to die. And so everyone that lived, whether they were rich or poor, they all had the same question on their minds. What are we going to eat today? And for a lot of them, nothing or not much. It affected everybody. It was a generational event, unprecedented. Everybody was dealing with massive change. And so the question was, what do we do about it? Well, Joel believed he had a message. He had a prophecy 
direct from God that gave them four things, four commands that God was giving them to get through this incredible plague that they were experiencing, this calamity that they were experiencing. First, it said you need to mourn, you need to lament because you're experiencing loss. And that's a human reaction. It's a natural thing to do when you're ever experiencing something like this. Um, the next thing you need to do is you need to gather in whatever way that you can. You need to come together and share this experience together. If you're trying to do it all by yourself, you're not going to be strong. You're strong when you share your burdens together. The third thing that you need to do, God says, is you have to return. And what that means is repent. There's a reason these things are happening, and it's not just because of circumstance. It has something to do with the brokenness of the world and the natural order of things, which goes back to human sinfulness, goes back to human brokenness, and human the way humans have rebelled against God. And so you need to acknowledge that and account for that and get back on a road that leads you to God rather than away from God. And then finally, the last command is you need to dream. So we're only going to deal with the last one because we've already spent three weeks talking about the first three. If you're interested in those, then they're all up on our church's YouTube channel and you can get caught up if you haven't been with us. So let's talk about this one, and this is uh, in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. Well, here's the deal. This is also, I think, something that I've brought. I actually ask you to open up your Bibles and follow along. Not because I'm real concerned with us being all showy as a Bible church, but because God's given his word to all of us, not just to me. And so if it's up on the screen, you only pay attention to it if it's up on the screen, and the rest of the time, you're relying on me to tell you what it says. Well, I'd rather have us all working together, and so uh, you have a paper Bible in front of you, and we'll show you where to find Joel if you don't know. It's right here. Um, this is an outline of the entire Old Testament, so the first two-thirds of the book. And so if you go halfway through the paper Bible and you keep going towards the back, kind of sifting through the pages... You'll, you'll find Joel. Now, you have to be careful because it's in the part of the Bible where it's a lot of little books. That's why they call it minor prophets. It's because they're only two, three chapters long. So be careful, but you should be able to find Joel, and we're in chapter two. The other thing is, um, Travis, if you could go back to the slide that has the phone number on it. You can also, this is a little bit different for me too, uh, with me coming here. You can text me actually during the message. I would really like to get some feedback from you. I'm not going to be able to answer you during the message, but I'd like to hear what you think about what we're talking about, whether you have comments or questions, feedback, even criticisms. I would like to receive those, and sometimes we pull one out before we go and uh, let everybody else see it too. So send all that to me, and I'll give you some specific things to work on too. All right, so we're ready. Let's talk about the last command of God in times like this, we're seeing if it applies to us now, and that is to dream. So you'll notice several things. I'm going to point out some things to you from the study I've done. The first thing you notice right off the bat is the word afterward. Hutch read that for us, right? It starts with after this or afterward, which immediately raises the question, well, after what? What is this that's coming after something that came before? And if we've been reading Joel, what we really hope is that the after is that the rain came back and that the locusts were driven off and they were killed off. They ate too much and their bellies exploded and they're done. And we're hoping that the, the, green, the fields are green again. And the orchards are green again, and things are starting to grow again, and the livestock has something to eat, and the people have full bellies, and things are getting back to normal. That's what we really hope is going on. And if you read the first 10, the 10 verses that come before this verse, verse 28 is where we started, where Hutch started, but if you read the 10 verses before that, you discover that's what happened. Everything got better. The locusts died. The rains came back. The crops grew again. Everybody had abundance now. There was enough for everybody. And we're going, man, that is awesome. That's what we've been praying for. That's what we want. For all this to just get better. 
right? We don't have to mess with all the stuff anymore that was causing us such heartache and trouble. But then that raises the question, well, what could be better than that? What comes after that? And the answer is that God says, okay, full bellies, green fields, that's great, but that's not the best I have to give. I also want to give you my Holy Spirit. And the reason that is so great is because the Holy Spirit allows people to see things for what they really are and gives you hope and gives you peace and gives you joy. The Holy Spirit goes beyond the surface of things and gets down to your soul, which frankly, folks, in times like this, we don't realize that's what needs God's work the most. It's not getting everything back to where it was before. It's making us better. It's making us more healthy, more whole, more redeemed. That's what God does. That's the business that God is in. And so the afterward is God doing that. And the question is, is that what God's doing now? Well, who gets that? Who gets the blessing? If you look at your verse, I'm going to get you involved now. Look at that. Who are the ones that get the Holy Spirit? It says it right there. You should be able to shout it out to me. Yes, you can talk in church. All people. Everyone. Let me ask you the question. Does it matter if you're a man or a woman? No. Does it matter if you're young or, I won't point to the old people, Some of you are volunteering. Okay, old? Does it matter if you're old or young? No. No. Does it matter if you're rich or poor? No, No, because it even says the servants, the house slaves, they get the Holy Spirit too. So here's some interesting news. It's not just the religious people. It's not that those that wear the black robes that get the Holy Spirit. Everybody gets the Holy Spirit. Now, if you read on, you'll notice that um, it's not all unicorns and rainbows. You'll see words like blood and smoke and fire. What's going on there? It says that everything's going to be great and terrible. Great and terrible. Okay, well, here's where my seminary training might help us out a little bit. Because if you do some deep dive study of the Bible, there are some different forms of literature that can be found in the Bible. There's some different ways to write the material. And one of them uses words like this, smoke, fire, blood. It's a form of writing that is called apocalyptic. That's your big word for the day. Later on today, when you're gathering everybody for the football game, you can throw this out and impress. Hey, yeah, church, we talked about the apocalyptic, you know. I know about that stuff. What that means is, in a nutshell, is there's parts of the Bible that aren't just talking about what's happening in the here and now. The plagues, the locusts, the sickness, the stuff that's a big deal, that makes the news. But it's really not intrinsic to God's bigger story. Because the bigger story is that God is bringing things to a point where good will finally triumph over evil and evil will finally be defeated. Now, evil's not going to give up without a fight. So it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a big battle. And it hasn't happened yet, but it will someday. And so one of the things that we realize that God helps us to realize is that everything that's happening now is only part of the story. There's a bigger story. And we get to understand it because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We get to actually dream dreams, it says. You see that there? And we get to have visions which go way beyond the nightly news. And whatever you see on Facebook or the latest podcast... All that stuff is small potatoes. I came from Idaho, and that's a phrase we use, small potatoes. 
yeah, I don't live there anymore. I live here now. Yeah, Dallas, you saw my house. Yes, I live here now. Okay, well, I'll, let you, I'll let you stew on that. So what this means is, is we get to understand that there's a bigger picture. God is moving things toward an ultimate battle, but ultimately we are delivered from that. We're saved from the destruction of that battle. In other words, when all this stuff is happening, there's a sense in which we can rise above it and have an eternal perspective on it. And then finally, what you may not know, some of you may know, let's quiz you on this, this verse in Joel, which happened six, seven hundred years before Jesus, this verse is quoted in the New Testament, word for word, and brought to bear on what was happening in the New Testament. Does anybody know? What book? Choir, if you were guys who are here at the early service, can't answer this. Which book in the New Testament quotes these words we, we've been looking at, word for word? What's that? Revelation? Great guess. No. <laughs> no. Anybody else got a guess? Biblical scholars. Really? Okay, guess. The Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. Yes, but I need you to be more specific. Anybody know? What? Acts chapter 2. Here it is. Word for word, right? There it is. Okay, Miss K, what's going on in the book of Acts chapter 2 in which these verses show up? Specific event. Nope, nope, nope. Peter preaching, and, and the day is called, it's got a fancy name, Pentecost. Biblical scholar of the day. Let's give it up for Miss Kay. Good job. <laughs> Pentecost, folks, is the birth date of the church. It's when the church came into being, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on all of the Christians. So, folks, what we mean by that is that if we're the church... And if you call yourself a Christian, what Joel was talking about is something that would happen someday. It's already happened. It's already happened. And you, you are a part of it. It's happened to you. You've received the Holy Spirit. It has been poured out on you. You're part of the all people. Which means that when stuff happens... You have the ability to dream dreams and have visions of something bigger than everything that's in the nightly news. The problem is we get so caught up in that stuff and it affects our lives and we have to adjust, but it becomes everything that we see. So here I am, your helpful pastor, to give you a crash course on how to dream again, how to have dreams again to awaken the dreamer that's why i'm here these are just from my experience so you may text me some of the ideas that you have but this is my experience of how you can restart your dreaming the first comes with a remembrance of all that god has done thus far how god has rescued you thus far again what happened in the book of joel 6 7 here 700 years before jesus it's been 2,000 years since, and all of these things that have been so momentous have captivated our lives, stolen all of our attention, and gotten us all riled up. They've come and they've gone, and God has delivered us and rescued us, kept us safe over and over and over again. Some of you who are sitting in this room, you have your own story of how God has brought you safely through. You know how God has delivered you, how God has healed you, how God is rescuing you even today. It's time to remember that and not let the news and the podcasts and the social media posts tell us who we are or what we're seeing. If you're following Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, you have another perspective. 
Secondly, the stories need to be told and they need to be heard. My concern right now with this culture is that we are spending so much time looking at screens that we aren't having time to look at each other. I mean, I'm even in restaurants, and I'm seeing a couple, married couple or a dating couple, or I'm seeing a family with kids, and every single one of them is spending the whole dinner looking at this thing. When they've had a golden opportunity to talk to each other. I know people that their dinner time is spent looking in front of, is spent watching the TV. I'm not going to be one of those pastors that says you shouldn't do that. What I am saying is the problem is it's crowding out these times that God has given us to learn more about each other and to hear each other's dreams and to hear the visions that God is giving each of us. And if church is one thing, churches should be a place where we can tell those stories and we can stop talking and we can hear those stories. That's incredibly important because it encourages all of us to dream when we're in a place where that's a good thing, where that's affirmed. And finally, dreams in the Bible are one of the best ways to pray. Dreams in the Bible are one of the clearest ways that God communicates to people. This Christmas, you're going to hear about a couple, Joseph, hearing in a dream, the wise men hearing in a dream, God comes to people through dreams. It's a form of prayer. If you're out exercising in the morning, instead of having the ear things in, listening to a podcast or listening to music, take them out and just listen. God's going to speak to you. Unlock your creativity. Give God your imagination. Give God your thoughts. Let God take them wherever they're going to go. That's how dreams happen. Dreams don't just happen at night. Dreams happen during the day, and it's a chief way that God is speaking to us. So, here is my assignment for you all. Every one of you. I, I, again, I'm a preacher that gives assignments. So even if you're here just for this week, you, you, no pass. You got an assignment too. You too. Four things that God is commanding through the prophet Joel. I think they apply today. So the question is, which do you most need to focus on? Do you need to focus on repenting? I'm sorry, lamenting, mourning. Has things happened to you over the last 19 months that you grieve the loss? Or you grieve the loss of what we've all experienced? It needs to be named. It needs to be listed. You need to be sad that it's gone. Maybe that's something you need to do in your own life or for the society you live in. Gather. Doesn't matter how we do it. We have several of our Facebook friends that are with us live right now. Hello, Facebook Live friends. They're gathered with us just as much as we're gathered together, but that needs to mean something. We need to go through this together. Rather than be divided, we must be united in the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's returning you need to repent. There's ways in which this time over the last 19 months you've drifted away from God. And God's calling you back onto his path. Do that. Heed that call. And then finally, dream. What are the new dreams that you're having coming out of this experience that fit better with God's perspective, with an eternal vision? for what God's doing in the world rather than just in the here and now. And then as a church, I'm talking to the OPC people, which of these do we need to focus on the most right now? Probably all of them, but which one really occurs to you? Text those to me. I'd really love to hear from you about which of these four you think as a church we most need to be dealing with and working on right now. It's just like everything else in life, folks. If you find yourself stuck in the midst of a calamity where everything is changing, 
You can either let that river take you away or you can see if God is giving you steps out of that. We believe, Book of Joel, he is. Four of them, as a matter of fact. And not only that, but God has said, I am pouring out, pouring out my Holy Spirit on you so that you can live with faithfulness through this time. And the next one. Will you take that first step? So, sometime today, five minutes, ten minutes, in between the games, whatever, take a moment to yourself, ask yourself the question, what has God said today which has impacted you the most? And then the next question you ask yourself is this, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Gracious God, We are so thankful that in the midst of the craziness of our life, you speak, and you speak clearly. We're thankful that we have received that word over these last four weeks. Now, oh God, give us the courage to act on it, to change our behavior if it needs to be changed, to change our attitudes if they need to be changed. To ask forgiveness for all the ways that we've drifted off your path. And then to return to the path. But most of all, God, unlock our dreams. Give us visions that aren't just locked in the past and what we've lost and what we want to get back. But about where you are in the future and how we can follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe in this place that if we've heard God's word and we believe it's the truth, we need to declare it. We need to affirm it and to do that with each other out loud. And so if you'd like to join us, please do. The words are in your um, bulletin. They're up on the screen as we affirm our faith using one of our creeds. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask untruth in both church and culture, 
to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives. Thank you. You may be seated. Gracious and holy God, thank you so much. Thank you for your love and mercy which has been poured out for us and the guidance and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. Help us to use that not just for ourselves but to be a blessing to others. We can do that through prayer. Right now I feel your Holy Spirit prompting my heart to pray for the friends, the people in the first three rows up here. God, I'm so grateful for them and how they've shared in our worship today. And I ask your protection and your guidance for them as they go to school this week, as they spend time with their friends, and as they do all their activities and they do their homework and spend time with their families. I pray that you would protect them and watch over them But more than that, I pray that you would give them your Holy Spirit. Yes, you give it to the young as well. Lord, so that they can thrive. So they can see the world around them and not be afraid. They can see themselves and not be ashamed. But they can walk with your strength. And Lord, I feel your Spirit prompting me to pray for their parents who are here and not here. Pray for the grandparents. Lord God, you've given them a task of nurturing and guiding and and helping, and it's an incredibly difficult task in today's world. There's a sense in which it's always been, but the, the distractions and the challenges and the threats seem so big today. Lord, I pray that you would give these parents and grandparents your strength. Give them wisdom. Help them to know how to be the parents that you've created them and called them to be. Lord, there's so many choices that they have to make day in and day out. If they make mistakes, I pray, Lord, that you would quickly give them mercy. Lord, help them to confess, but then to grow and and move on. Help them to see that Their parenting is about their love, the love you've given them to share with their kids. It's not about getting it all perfectly right. And Lord, for the rest of us, help us to be ambassadors of your grace, mercy, and strength for the families of our community. Lord God, as we see them, help us to encourage them, to affirm them, to withhold our judgment of them, and instead give them friendship and solace and help. I pray that you would do this in Jesus' name, and I pray that you would attend to our personal prayers in a few silent moments as we give them to you now. And hear us, Lord, as we pray together the words that you taught us to pray, Lord Jesus, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Already heard the way that we are receiving the offering right now, contactless, and we're thankful for the way that you support the work of the church. So now's the time not just to listen to music, but to reflect on how God wants to use you this week to bring goodness into the world. storm and I know that'll keep you safe from all earthly harm one day when my weary soul is at rest I'm going home to be forever blessed and never doubt Jesus will surely fiery furnace for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When I think of what my God can do, He delivered Daniel, I know He will deliver you.
Holy and mighty God, you have not failed us yet. You are not failing us now. And in the future, you will continue to lead us into the greatest success story that has ever been. And we get to be a part of it. Show us how we can be a part of your great success story in the world, we pray. Use our gifts to advance that, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep standing and let's sit. <laughs> children's choir, Miss Bonnie, the director. Didn't they do an amazing job today? And man, are we blessed. Jeremy and the choir, man, you just lit us up today. Thank you so much. And actually, I want you all to say thank you to the kids because they've been practicing so hard. I'm going to give you a chance to do that. You guys are going to come with me back into the narthex so everybody can greet you with me when they uh, come out. So uh, I'm going to give the benediction and then you guys all follow me. I'm going to say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you a spirit, pour out his Holy Spirit on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week. Come on, guys. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me.